there's something about the Japanese landscape that draws me back time and time again. I've been visiting the gardens of Japan for over 40 years. But you know, you don't have to travel overseas to understand the history and culture of a country. You can come to Kaura and see one of the most magnificent traditional Japanese gardens in the Southern Hemisphere. The site was chosen by Ken Nakajima, a world-famous Japanese landscape designer. And to understand the garden, you have to realise it's all about Japanese symbolism in this incredible landscape. We're on the top of the mountain, which represents Mount Fuji. And you can hear the water rushing down the side of the hillside from the mountain all the way down to the upper lake through various streams and rivers, down to the white gravel that represents the beaches of the Pacific. It also provides a great habitat for the local wildlife to enjoy. The garden was actually built as a memorial to the Japanese prisoners of war who died during the Kaura breakout in 1944. The plant palette in the entire garden is a very clever selection of both native and exotic, and they work really well together. We have Ken Nakajima to thank for all the retaining of these beautiful old gums, and they're right throughout the entire landscape. This one is a white box, Eucalyptus albans, and it's been here for a long, long time. Ken was really intent that these represent the strong, robust Australian soldiers, and they certainly do that well. When you look at the way that the roots and the rocks and the earth all combine as one, and again on this side, the soldiers, the gum trees are definitely at home here. Throughout the garden, the shrubs are clipped and pruned into this really tight shape. They're all individual, and the design is called tamamono. Mono meaning single, one off. All of the mounds are actually squat, tight on the ground, broader and then narrower at the top, so that you can see the landscape beyond. They're actually representing rocks and clouds sitting on the landscape. And they're really stunning, very dramatic. So when the plants all join up like the backs of a giant lizard or a dragon, it's called a karakomi, and that gives you a different form and landscape altogether. Now, the gardeners here have mastered lots of different pruning techniques, including cloud pruning. Now, if you select a fine-leaf evergreen shrub yourself this weekend, you can give it a try at home. As you follow the pathways down, they take you actually on a journey. On the way, you pass what appears to be a little tea house, but in fact, these are symbolic little villages and houses along your journey. So it's a great place to relax and just sit and take in the vista. Wow, and you get these great garden views that are framed with the windows. But look at these Japanese black pines. They're magnificent. Thank now, you. Matt, you've been here, what, 14 years? They'd be original trees. Original trees, yeah. So these guys are about 40 years old in the garden. Uh, so we're looking at pruning these two uh, trees twice a year, once in the summertime, once in the autumn. Uh, and overall, the pruning techniques are to try and create balance. They say that the black pine pruning is the litmus test of your pruning skills. Well, you guys have, have gone beyond that. <laughs> Pretty harsh environment then, so what what's are your biggest challenges? We're on a west-facing granite seam, uh, so we, we do face all the elements through summer and winter. So that's where it's important that we're using products such as wetting, wetting agents. Uh, irrigation is paramount. Part of the garden's cultural history is housed in the cultural centre and includes a large collection of Japanese heritage items, including a Somaneshki vase standing 1.4 metres high. 
which has a twin at the Japanese Imperial Palace in Tokyo, Japan. Now, I notice you've got a wonderful bonsai collection and students coming in to learn. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, the bonsai lessons are something that we're really trying to grow and we currently have some bonsai teachers coming in and taking students uh, pretty regularly. Well, you've got a very high standard of bonsais here for them to learn from and, and, and to observe and it's a fantastic hobby and in this location it doesn't get any better. <laughs> if you're going to come, Allow some time to escape. Yeah. Come in, quiet your mind and forget about what's going on. Yeah. This is the place to be. Well, I've come to the end of my journey and I can't believe how gardens continue to bring people together. Now, if you're looking for somewhere, a destination to relax and unwind, you'd have to come out here to the central west of New South Wales where you'll find a bit of Aussie history and a glorious landscape in one location.